Alright, so I'm going to just explain our lift. So, well, here it is. Kind of up close a little bit. But we're using a chain bar. And it's working out really nice. So basically, what you do first is you get sprocket. That's what we have right here. Uh, usually you want to use high strength um, if you're doing it for the arm. But any size will work. We just had to use a smaller one because... Um, we couldn't go any higher on our robot, so um, you screw the sprocket directly into the metal. That's what we have here. It goes here and here, and then the sprocket does not move at all. Same thing here, does not move. Um, then we added spacer here, just to space it off, and then our arm, metal piece, all the way down. And then our gear was attached to the metal gears attached to the metal and the axle goes straight through here and all the way here we just haven't cut it um, the one thing you need for your gears that has to um, go around the axle it cannot hook onto the axle we had to drill a hole into the uh, I think it's an 84 tooth gear so it wouldn't like hold onto the axle. So we, there's a big circular hole. Um, if you can use the high strength gears, um, they come with a circular insert. That's what we tried that, but we couldn't lift as much. Um, so we just went with this. Um, so now the chain. If I were, I'll take the chain off for you in a second. But the chain is just keeping the whole intake part oriented. Um, so you just build, I'll just give you a good shot, here is the left side of the robot, here is the right side, so same thing on either side, just opposite. All this down here, we have a 393 motor, 12 tooth gear, powering an 84 tooth at 7 to 1 ratio, and then this, all this stuff here, is just to power our potentiometer, here. Um, so then up here, the you need a piece of metal. We use that piece of metal to put the intake on. But um, you put the same uh, sprocket size if you want it to stay the same angle all the way up and down. If you want to have it change angle, uh, you can put a different sprocket size and it'll just change the angle. Um, so you screw the sprocket again into the metal. And that's screwed in. Then you put an axle through spacer. And then um, you put it through uh, the arm, which is this piece right here. Um, the axle spins around the arm, and it does not spin around this intake piece. So then this angle piece right here is just for support of the axle. So if I were to take the chain off, which I'm going to try to do with my hand, which it does not look like it can. that. There's that. So when I take the chain off, if I ever can, there we go. The intake will do that. So you can ha adjust your angle of the intake by chain if we want to have it like that. I think ours is about like that. You could have it like that if you want. <laughs> but you can just put the chain on where you want the intake. So when I move it down, the axle does not spin around this because or the sprocket because that is directly screwed into the metal. So if I move the intake, the axle right there spins around the piece of metal here. Go down here. See the sprocket is not moving. It's screwed in. Um, I'll just show you our intake now. We have three um, chain loops I guess. We have these Lexan shield things which really help. Um, we just put them on the sides. We were just going to put them there because the bags were getting caught in between the chain and the sprocket when we were intaking and that was really bad. 
Um, we just have two 393s powering the intake. The reason we have it go up here to the very top instead of just the sprocket down here is because the objects like to flip out. So they still do, but not as much as when we just had the one sprocket down here. Um, then this piece of Lexan here we're using to put the five match loads on and then those will rest on the intake here and then the Lexan and then we can just flip them off into the high goal fairly easily, about three, four seconds. And then these Lexan sides just help the bags not get caught in the arm when it's like right here because that was happening quite a lot. Um, I guess I'll just show you the whole robot. So we have just a uh, six motor holonomic H drive, uh, direct drive. Their motors are internally set for speed. The holonomic wheels are right back there. You can't see them as much because it's a bunch of junk. Um, Cortex. Let's see. Yeah, so it's just we cut our frame really short so we can have our intake rest all the way out without having to flip down the beginning of the match. I hope this helps you. If you have any questions, just uh, email us. Thanks.